back students welcome to the course natural language processing myself priyanka gupta i am working as assistant professor in department of computer science and engineering data science department at institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad so we are going to uh, discuss about the algorithm in nlp so uh, about nlp i'll say about what is the introduction of algorithm Uh, what is the symbolic algorithm what is uh, statistical algorithm what is hybrid alg algorithm that is a combination of symbolic and statistical algorithm and after that i will uh, discuss about uh, what are the different algorithm are there that is going to be used in the different applications uh, the the fields are machine translation automatic tra uh, summarization speech recognition text classification uh, named entity recognition extraction and semantic analysis so let us start nlp algorithms and basically nlp algorithm are designed based on the type of the problem it is mean to solve means before the before applying the model to the different applications we need to apply as a researcher as a user a, a specific a, a relevant a, nlp algorithm so basically these are designed to uh, just uh, solve the problem so that we can achieve we can uh, just uh, get the output to get the required output as per the natural language processing therefore the top uh, nlp algorithm will likely be further segmented into the type of task that is has been trained to do so there will be the different type of task depending about upon our applications and relevant area uh, uh, there will be a need to apply relevant algorithm on that so uh, because of that only the type of task will be divided however the algorithm may comprise many of the same techniques or methods so regardless of their specific task so uh, the task can be different task can be uh, any uh, any depend on our application but the algorithm can be same so basically the relevant uh, algorithm is very very important to apply on different models for example if i'll say nearly every nlp algorithm is tasked with the uh, deriving meaning from the textual data uh, so basically what is our goal is to apply the nlp algorithm we need to just take we need to just apply the relevant algorithm and then we need to derive a textual data out of that because of uh, why because we are doing the um, textual um, extraction we can say uh, we are doing the text pre processing so in order to do that it has to be understand the data the model has to understand the data then only it can interpret as a human language that is natural language now in order to understand the data the machine has to break it down into its simplest form so uh, this is basically we need to feed the machine so that the machine can understand in the human uh, language in the human uh, uh, linguistic science So that uh, sentence and paragraphs are, we can say, document should be uh, segmented, should be break down into the different task, different simplest forms. Uh, or we can say uh, uh, some uh, simplest form, simplest format, so that it can understand the problem. Uh, now the main job of these algorithm, these NLP algorithm, is to utilize different techniques. to efficiently transform those or mm, we can say confusing and unstructured input or data into the ma meaningful knowledgeable information so that is a main goal from the uh, confusing and under, uh, unstructured input or data the machine has to just convert those uh, data that uh, into the knowledgeable information that the machine can going to be understand and that it is going to learn from uh, right so that is a main uh, job of the applying the different type of algorithm on the uh, nlp models so that is our goal now uh, i will discuss about uh, different categories of the algorithm 
so nlp algorithm are segregated into the three different core categories those are uh, and uh, we can say an ai model that is choosing any of the categories depending on the data scientist approach so here in this computer science field uh, we need to just uh, 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 we, uh, we need to apply those things to uh, while we are going to do analysis on the different applications so before doing that we need to choose perfect model for that and then we need to just apply the perfect uh, algorithm on that so there are three categories according to the data the categories will be divided will be opted so those categories are the first is symbolic algorithm the symbolic algorithm serves as one of the backbone of nlp algorithm so this is the we can say basic of the base of the nlp algorithm it will be the responsible for analyzing the meaning of each input text and then utilizing it to establish a relationship between different concepts so that is main responsibility of the symbolic algorithm uh, that is going to just analyze the meaning of each input text and then that is going to utilize according to the application that is going to just establish a uh, establish a relationship between the different concept uh, that is a main main motive of the symbolic algorithm this type of approach actually con contrast the machine learning model machine learning model uh, are nothing when uh, uh, when we are saying the machine is going to just understand something machine is going to just learn something so bef uh, before apply uh, after applying the algorithm we need to apply some models also those are nothing but the uh, most of the time the machine learning model will be used either the neural network models are also will be used so uh, those machine learning learning model is going to be rely on the statistical analysis uh, out of the logic to make the decision about words so this approach actually may making the combination with the machine learning model uh, that is also with the statistical analysis to make the decision about the different words from the uh, sentences uh, we can say document corpora now symbolic algorithm leverages the symbols to represent knowledge so there will be some uh, um, represented will be followed that will be uh, the, the, just it will be pictured that that is going to make some symbols to represent different types of knowledge and also the relation between concept so there can be possibility there can be used uh, tree like structure or graph like structure to just represent those symbols to represent those knowledge so that is basically just uh, showing us what are the different uh, um, relationship between the different concepts of the that particular application and uh, different variable of the that particular application now it is going to actually produce more accurate results why because that is going to assign uh, meanings to the words so uh, the words meaning will be just taken out of this applying this algorithm and then based on the context based on the context it will be embedded knowledge to disambiguate the language so if there will be ambiguity also that is going to just uh, remove those uh, so that is going to dis disambiguate those and then it will be just uh, will be uh, uh, this error free and that is going to be just uh, making it meaningful information right so that is main goal of the symbolic algorithm now the knowledge graph will be used so uh, here uh, we have seen their uh, represent knowledge so represent knowledge is nothing but we are going to make some uh, graphs we are going to make some knowledge graphs so that is going to help define the concept of a language so that as well as the relationship between the those concept so words can be understood in the context so that is Uh, how that is going to uh, uh, show us different graphs knowledge graphs and then uh, in knowledge graph it is going to show us the different relationship uh, between the concept and relationships so that the words can be understood in a uh, respectful uh, meaningful way uh, in the context of the application so that is a main motive now uh, these knowledge graph what we have seen that knowledge will be represented by those uh, that also play a crucial role in defining concepts 
so concepts of whatever uh, input we are giving as a language along with the relationship between those concepts so two things will be applied here uh, on the knowledge graph while we are representing the knowledge defining the concept that is going to give as a input language and the relationship between those concepts so two things will be uh, shown here in the knowledge graph these explicit rules and connections enable us to build explainable ai model uh, now before doing um, before applying the ai model we need to just apply these knowledge uh, graphs and rules and connections so that it will be easy to just understand by understandable by the machine uh, as we will apply the ai model on that so that is going to offer both transparency and flexibility to change the uh, input change the uh, uh, change the concept uh, con context according to the application that will be the explicit rule and uh, connection uh, according to the knowledge graph since uh, we can see these knowledge graphs these algorithm going to utilize logic uh, when we are representing the knowledge graph and assigning the meaning to the word based on the context so uh, what does it mean actually uh, before uh, going to represent any uh, graph we need to understand what is the logic of the words uh, as per the linguistic science so that uh, uh, by the logic what that particular word is going to give us the meaning that will be context free that will be error free this, that will be disambiguate and then uh, we need to the machine is needed to be assign the proper meaning to that particular word uh, uh, in the morphology also uh, on the based of the context so that uh, the machine can achieve the high accuracy machine can achieve the high accuracy out of that now due to its ability to properly define define the concept and uh, easily understand what context this algorithm has to build ai x ai so that uh, means that is going to make a application uh, and uh, that is going to uh, take up the ability to just uh, perform well uh, and properly define the concept and the uh, uh, easily understandable words in the um, in the uh, means of context and that is going to help us to achieve our target achieve our goal now uh, the single biggest downside of this symbolic uh, uh, algorithm is that when we are applying the model uh, is the ability to scale your set of rules so we cannot scale up our uh, different rules different set of rules when we have just applying this symbolic algorithm so knowledge graph can provide a great baseline of knowledge but to expand our uh, upon the existing rules are develop new so only the thing is we cannot remove uh, all the knowledge from the uh, graph only we can just extend that only we can just develop those new um, de develop those as a new knowledge graphs so uh, that uh, we have to uh, just apply domain specific rule so when we need to just uh, going to be just specific to the domain so that is a uh, we can say drawback of the symbolic algorithm this expert expertise is often going to be limited that is going to be vast and also going to be limited and going to uh, just leverage our subject matter experts uh, if it is going to be just um, based on the domain so that is going to taking them away from their day to day work so that is a main uh, motive of this uh, uh, applying this uh, symbolic algorithm and that is also a, we, we can say in the form of limitation why because the other uh, uh, the humans are uh, also doing the experts are also doing the same work but as per we are up, we are making a ai um, ai related model ai related application that is going to just limit them just uh, because the machine is going to replace those replace th uh, them those are the subject experts or domain experts right uh, and now we can say however the symbolic algorithm are challenging to expand a set of rule that is owing to 
various limitations so uh, we have discussed these three various limitations of the symbolic algorithm those, those are the uh, you can say uh, challenging for the developing the more vast uh, rules for the most vast uh, algorithm for the most vast uh, models for the different uh, uh, upcoming uh, we can say uh, this applications now i'll discuss about the statistical algorithm that that is a second type of algorithm a statistical algorithm can make the job easy for machine by going through the text so whenever uh, the machine is going to uh, just pre process the text out of the sentence uh, uh, we can say corpus or corpora uh, that is uh, machine is going to just replace those so uh, that is going to understand each of the words uh, 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 as a text and then going to retrieve the meaning also along with the uh, text that is going to retrieve the actual meaning of each words each words out of the document and it is also highly efficient algorithm because it is going to help machine to learn about the human language why because it recognizing the patterns and trend also so uh, because of that that is going to just uh, recognize and understand the uh, different human language and uh, pattern and trend in a way to just make a array of the input text so uh, this is uh, why this is also widely used statistic uh, algorithm uh, statistical nlp again helping to machine uh, recognize patterns in large amount of text so uh, basically the this uh, type of algorithm will be applied on the huge amount of data that uh, when we are taking up the uh, different uh, application that is using the high amount of data large amount of data that is in the form of text as a document so it is going to help uh, and uh, making the machine to recognize the different pa patterns whenever we are using the high, uh, large amount of text from the corpus by finding these trends uh, we will find the different patterns and uh, trends out of that so um, a machine can develop its own understanding of human language so that is a need of to apply this uh, statistical algorithm so that the machine is going to understand and that is going to develop its understanding on the different human natural languages uh, now i can say in a statistical nlp this kind of analysis is going to use to predict the word which is likely to uh, follow another word in the sentence so uh, that is other type of application uh, a task we can say and uh, that is going to follow the different uh, words and that is going to give the uh, relevant output according to them uh, according uh, on the basis of one word it is going to give the uh, another word also so that is a main purpose that in that actually the probability will be applied so it is also used to determine uh, whether two sentences should be considered similar enough for uses such as semantic search or we can say question answering systems either we can say on the google search it will be applied mostly why because there we need to just search the relevant uh, sentences uh, here we are talking about the two sentences that is relevant and that will be considered to just search as a um, according to our need according to a user's need and then question answering system so one person is asking just a question uh, uh, to the machine and machine is going to answer them accordingly so that is also one type of probabilistic and statistical um, approach to apply this algorithm this type of algorithm now uh, this analysis going to help the machine to predict which word is going to retain which word is going to be occur whenever the current word in uh, it is whenever uh, on the base of the uh, current word in the real time scenario so that is a most um, we can say used uh, algorithm is there so uh, according to one search it is going to give the another search uh, search word a sentence because uh, according uh, on the base of the probabilistic uh, models and statistical model it is going to give this results uh, we can say uh, from the speech recognition semantic sentiment analysis and machine translation to text suggestion statistical algorithm are used for the many applications so these are the areas and applications where the statistical approach will be applied 
द मेन रीजन बिहाइंड इट्स वाइड स्प्रेड यूज बिकॉज इट इट कैन वर्क ऑन द लार्ज डेटा सेट दैट इज अ मेन पॉइंट ऑफ दिस यूजिंग दिस एल्गोरिदम दैट इज स्टेटिस्टिकल एल्गोरिदम मोर ओवर वी कैन से द स्टेटिस्टिकल एल्गोरिदम कैन डिडेक्ट वेदर टू सेंटेंसेस इन अ पैराग्राफ आर सिमिलर अकॉर्डिंग टू द मीनिंग एंड विच वन इज गोइंग टू बी यूज so that is a different uh, another type of uh, search uh, semantic search that is going to be just achieved by the applying uh, semantic uh, statistical algorithm now the major downside of this uh, algorithm is that is going to be partly dependent on complex feature engineering now what is that it is uh, when because the larger amount of data sets will be there text will be there that is going to make some features the complex features out of that and uh, um, because of that it will be very complex and time time consuming so that is a main disadvantage of this simple statistical algorithm now let's move to the another type of algorithm that is a hybrid algorithm that is a combination of these two algorithm this type of nlp algorithm actually combining the power of uh, symbolic algorithm and statistical algorithm to producing a effective result so this type of algorithm is also highly uh, used nowadays for the live uh, uh, for the live uh, applications uh, now by focusing on the main benefit and features it can be easily uh, negate the uh, maximum weakness of either approach which is essential for the high accuracy so that is a main benefit and feature of this uh, hybrid algorithm uh, now i can say the good example of the symbolic algorithm that is going to support machine learning uh, by uh, uh, by by its feature and enrichment so while we will applying the different features it is going to just help with the uh, machine learning models uh, accordingly Uh, with the machine graph, with the knowledge graph, as we were using the in the symbolic algorithm, that that is going to help and add and enrich our feature set according to the model and having the less to learn on its own. So uh, that is a main benefit of this uh, uh, hybrid algorithm to apply. That is going to uh, add the different feature sets to our model, and uh, so that the machine. is going to just uh, le- uh, understand less it is already has been just under- uh, understood earlier and that is going to give the result accordingly uh, now uh, what is the main motive of applying this all algorithm to just make uh, machine easily understandable and achieve the uh, applications uh, applications output as per our need Uh, the there are many ways where both the approaches can be just uh, combined together first so the symbolic supporting the machine learning the machine learning supporting the symbolic algorithm and symbolic and machine learning uh, working in a parallel so now uh, likewise that the machine learning and symbolic uh, algorithm will be combined together to just as, uh, learn more uh, from the machine on the other hand machine learning can help the symbolic by creating an initial rule set through that the automated annotation can be achieved to the of the data set that is larger data set uh, now expert can then review and approve the rule set that is uh, predefined that is initially uh, set the rules that on uh, that is going to be built it on themselves so that is a uh, again main motive of this uh, applying the hybrid algorithm last i can say symbolic and machine learning can work together to ensure the proper understanding of any passage so uh, passage i can say uh, out of the sentence uh, out of the paragraph it will be achieved uh, on the larger data sets so whether certain terms are monetary figures may now Uh, where certain terms or monetary figures may repeat within a document, they are going to mean entirely different things. So whenever we will apply the hybrid al- algorithm, the meaning can be different out of the uh, algorithm what we will apply. Now a hybrid workflow could have symbolic assigned certain roles and characteristics. Uh, to the passages what we are taking from the different paragraphs that are relate to the machine learning model for to 
for the context uh, on the context it will be just applied so that will be the hybrid workflow out of the applied uh, symbolic as well as the statistical algorithm on the different characteristics on the rule next uh, uh, i will uh, just uh, talk about the different nlp algorithm different task that is going to be applied according to the need uh, for the different applications uh, so that we can achieve the different uh, outputs so today we can see many examples of nlp algorithm in everyday life so from machine learning machine translation to sentiment analysis when applied correctly that is going to give huge cases uh, and different sig significant value now i will talk about machine translation that is the first type of task that on that nlp algorithm will be applied machine translation uses computers to translate words phrases and sentences from one language to another language so that is a main motive of machine translation it can help you quickly translate large amount of text at uh, at one place also for example if i'll say this can be beneficial if you are looking to translate a book a website into the another language uh, so whenever the machine is going to be just apply, uh, on machine is going to be do just some uh, task related to the translation it will be beneficial whenever it is going to translate a book or it is going to just search on the website in the and uh, when we need to just change the language uh, uh, from one language to another language machine translation can also help you to understand the meaning of a document so that even if you cannot understand the language you can just interpret into the another language whichever it has been written in the that document and the corpus this type of automatic translation could be achieved by the particularly effective when we are working with an international client or we are having the files that need to be translated into our native language so that is also a type of uh, we can say a goal of the just uh, applying this type of task uh, using those uh, different type of applications algorithms next task is automatic summarization automatic summarization is the process to creating a short actionable summary from the larger piece of text so that is a main motive this is commonly used to process large amount of structured data or unstructured data out of news article emails business document etc and that is going to actually highlight the core information into a each file in each file with this information the people can determine whether content is relevant and useful to them or not so that is going to give you a short actionable summary out of the longer piece of text at one place and then uh, whatever the user uh, is needed uh, out of the machine they can just take out the challenge is here is establishing context of the that particular sentence a paragraph a document so make uh, just understanding the change is the only the problem to just uh, just uh, taking out the sum summary out of that so uh, this will be just uh, automatically uh, uh, done by the applying this uh, different type of algorithm on that uh, if i uh, i will talk about our model that is going to provide a high level of accuracy it must be able to identify the main idea from our article or from the document or from the text whatever we are just uh, summarizing and determining which sentence are relevant to it that is a main motive you uh, your ability to disambiguate information will ultimately dictate the success of your automatic summarization initiatives a uh, you can say uh, the machine's ability to just disambiguate the information that is going to be ultimately dictate the same uh, success as per uh, the machine is going to give the automatic summary out of the text so that is a uh, automatic summarization next type of task is speech recognition speech recognition is going to be convert spoken words into written or electronic text uh, this type of uh, task uh, the companies are going to use widely so companies can use this to help improve uh, customer service at the call centers 
dictating the medical notes and much more so uh, that can be used on the the uh, hospitals they are providing the virtual assistants many many uh, on the many sides it can be used the challenge is that the human speech mechanism is difficult to replicate using the computers why because because of the complexity of the process why, uh, the linguistic science is very typical complex why it is while it is going to be fit to the machine and machine is going to just dictate correctly it will depend on the applying the right algorithm and right model on that uh, that uh, in case that is going to involve several steps as acoustic analysis these are the uh, larger process uh, applying on the just uh, doing the speech recognition feature extraction and language modeling so these uh, few type of steps will be there followed in the task that is speech recognition uh, now a symbolic a statistical and hybrid algorithm can support your re re uh, speech recognition software for example rules map out uh, uh, the sequence of word or phrases neural network detect the speech pattern and together they they are going to provide a deep understanding of the spoken language so that can be a one type of example then rules is going to mapping ma map out the different sequence of words or phrases out of the text out of the uh, larger amount of uh, document and also when we will apply a machine learning when we will apply the neural network that is going to detect the speech pattern out of that next task is text classification text classification is a process of automatically categorizing the text document into one or more predefined categories so that is going to make a category out of that text classification is commonly used in business and marketing to categorize email messages and web pages so that is basically work to, uh, combined on to just commonly just classify the different type of uh, we can say documents on the each category each document is represented as a word, vector of words where each word is represented by a feature vector consisting of its frequency and position in the document so that that's how it is going to be just give the correct result the goal is to find the most appropriate category for each document using some distance measure so uh, this type of a uh, class text classification will also will be used in our email um, email ids so whenever email, on the email ids spam is coming some other type of uh, email emails are coming so it will be just segregated according to the text classification the summarization can be done into the two ways the first is extraction based summarization second is abstraction based summarization so extraction based summarization is nothing but it is causes the machine to extract only the main words and phrases from the document without specifying the modifying the original um, text abstraction based summarization is in this process the new words and phrase will be created from the text document which is going to depict all the information and int intent at one place so that is a uh, two type of um, summarization can be done on the text summarization task text classification can be used in the variety of ways for instance it can be used to classify a sentence up as positive or negative it can also predict which category a document belongs to which this can be useful for nearly any company across any industry so uh, that is very useful uh, now uh, uh, we'll go to the second uh, next topic that is named entity recognition uh, extraction that is ner named act, act Uh, named entity recognition and uh, that is going to aim to extract entities such as people places organization from the text so that is a main motive of this uh, task it is useful for applications such as information retrieval question answering and summarization among other areas so that is going to just make the entities out of the text uh, which people are going to use which place it is going to use which organization is it is going to used so ner system is typically trained on the manually annotated uh, text so that they can learn the language a specific pattern for each type of named entity so already will be fitted uh, with the named entity and that is going to give the result accordingly
However, this can be automated into a couple of different uh, ways. Also, uh, we can say here also knowledge graphs will be used to just use uh, uh, to identify different entities. So, with the existing knowledge and established uh, uh, connections between the entities, the machine can extract knowledge and information with a high degree of accuracy. So, that is a that is a benefit of using this NER. Other common approaches include supervised machine learning methods such as logistic regression, a support vector machine, as well as unsupervised methods such as neural network and clustering algorithm. So these are few type of uh, AI models will be applied in this um, type of task. Next task is sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is the process of identifying, extracting and categorizing opinions expressed in the piece of text. It can be used in media monitoring, customer service and market research. Uh, basically, it is going to segregate the different negative and positive uh, sentiment uh, by using different uh, emotions and uh, different characters. So it will be actually extracted by this sentiment analysis so that the media can monitor what is going into the world, what is going uh, as a customer service. They can just uh, uh, identify whatever the uh, customer is going to give us rating or whatever market uh, is uh, doing according to uh, different products. So goal of this sentiment analysis is to determine whether the given piece of text, for example, an um, article or review is going to give the positive, negative and neutral in tone. So that is a goal of the sentiment analysis. This is often referred to as a sentiment classification, also as a opinion mining. So that is a different names of the sentiment analysis task. Sentiment uh, analysis can be performed uh, on any type of unstructured text data from the comment on uh, your website, uh, our uh, we can say chatbots that is going to uh, given by the different customers and users on the product pages. It can be used to determine the voice of the customer and also to identify the areas for improvement. So there can be also the uh, speech uh, feedback, feedback can be given by the customers and users on uh, uh, according to the products. The, it can also be used for customer service purposes such as detecting the negative feedback about an issue so it can be resolved quickly by the company or industry. So that is a sentiment analysis task. Topic modeling, that is also a popular type of task uh, that will be used. Top topic modeling is one of the uh, algorithm that utilize statistical NLP uh, techniques to find out the themes or main motives from a massive bunch of text document. Basically, it is going to help machine in finding the subject that can be utilized for defining a particular text set. So, when I will talk about the corpus uh, of the text document having the numerous topics, so this algorithm will be applied and um, the task will be achieved by the suitable technique to find each topic by assessing a particular set of vocabulary of word. So latent detailed allocation is a popular choice when it comes to using the best technique for topic modeling. It is an user uh, unsupervised machine learning and helps in accumulating and organizing the archives in the large amount of data which is not going to be possible by the human annotation. Humans cannot just do that. Next, I, next is TF-IDF. So TF-IDF is an, a statistical NLP algorithm that is going to just, just apply on the different tasks that is important in evaluating the importance of a word to a particular document belonging to a massive collection. So what is the importance of one uh, particular word, uh, some uh, words that is going to be just identify this algorithm or task. NLP, uh, TF-IDF stands for the term frequency inverse document frequency. This technique involves a multiplication of distinct distincting values. First is term frequency. So the term frequency value gives you the total number of times a word comes up in a particular document. Stop words generally get a high term frequency in a document. So what are stop words actually in the linguistic science? Stop words are nothing whenever a sentence is going to be complete by the using some specific uh, a specific type of uh, you can say uh, words 
so that is called that is also uh, that is uh, that is called as a punctuation so punctuation said that like uh, uh, with the help of dot and commas it is going to be just called that is a stop word inverse document frequency inverse document frequency on the other hand highlighting the terms that are highly specific to a document or word that is going to be occur less time less number of time in a whole corpus of document so that is a uh, two types of uh, 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 technique has been combined at one place so that was all about the today's topic thank you for watching like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates